we'll get to what some of the regulations were and some of the changes in the banking system, but what is left in the DNA, as it were, of the economy, of the financial system, because of this wound that we suffered 10 years ago? Well, David, you know, on 9, I was thinking this morning, the coincidence of 9-11 and the 10th anniversary of Lehman just shows how much our perceptions have changed. I mean, 9-11 changed our perception of our vulnerabilities as a nation, our place in the world. And I think the financial crisis changed our perceptions of the overall operation of the economy, the degree to which it was dependent upon debt, and the degree to which financial instability could arise in a variety of sometimes unexpected quarters. I think the legacy today is in part one of more caution, uh, particularly among consumers in a lot of areas, rather less so in the part of corporations with, with their borrowing practices. I think secondly, uh, you have seen much better risk management in the regulated banks and the banking system is certainly more stable. Uh, but I don't think fundamentally the problems of the economy that were building in the pre-crisis period have been adequately addressed. The problems of productivity, of income inequality growth, and of racial inequality. So in a sense, the legacy or the DNA of the crisis has been an amplification and extension of a secular set of problems which we really do need to confront and which regrettably I think we're not confronting right now. But, but those problems as you described them, Dan, are really outside the purview of the Federal Reserve with the Department of Regulators, aren't they? Aren't they some much more like issues for political institutions to address? Well, I think I think the the when regulation goes wrong or when monetary policy goes wrong, uh, you certainly exacerbate whatever problems may have existed beforehand. I mean, uh, w when you allow people to pour their wealth, such wealth as they have, into a home and then they lose the home and are underwater for five or six or seven or eight years, that that is a mistake which creates more problems. I, I would also say that monetary policy does have a role to play in that uh, constant trade-off between price stability or inflation concerns on the one hand and maximum employment on the other. Uh, but, but you're right, uh, monetary policy does not solve all things. Uh, but m my point really is the financial crisis was not solely a failure of financial regulation or solely a failure of risk management by the banks. It was in a sense something that came out of a broader set of structural issues in the U.S. economy. So, Yaman, let's turn to you. You've written a terrific piece for Bloomberg here, really giving us an update on where we are today and what's different today than before. Give us a synopsis. What is, how fundamentally different is it? So, you know, as Dan mentioned, what's really improved is the risk management and the regulation uh, in the banking sector. Uh, the main core banking system, which is what collapsed during, during the crisis in 2008. Um, what hasn't changed, as Dan also said, there's still too much debt. Debt might have shifted from consumers who paid down their mortgages or lost their homes and had the mortgages written down or, or, or other ways, but companies have been borrowing and the government has borrowed massively. So, and this is not only US. If you look around the world, debt has gone up really fast. China has, has been borrowing like crazy. So there's a lot of debt, it has shifted. Banks might be really well regulated, but then there are, you know, some of the risk has shifted to shadow banks. Right. Which we will get to, but first, when we just take a look specifically about uh, the big banks, what I found interesting in your article is that how banks are borrowing money is fundamentally different and taking some risk uh, off the system. So if you take a look at, say, uh, how much they're getting out of short-term, like repo rates, short-term debt versus how much they're getting from deposits, it's so much more from deposits, which I guess is more sticky, uh, not as high risk. I mean, that's a fundamental shift for the market. Yes, and, and that's, that's partly, you know, Regulation helped with that. Um, you know, the bailouts brought confidence to the to the banking system. Um, uh, people thought they, that their banks wouldn't go bad. So yes, replacing replacing so much of short-term uh, finicky uh, borrowing that that was running, which was the run on the bank. All the repo repo lenders were, were running when they realized Lehman could be insolvent, right? They didn't right. even know, but they sensed insolvency, they ran. So that those have been replaced with deposits, which is much safer. And Dan, I know that that's something you specifically address is that short-term borrowing. But at the same time, to, pro, to go back to the shadow banking issue for a moment, mm -hmm. one of the things we've seen is a dramatic increase in the assets. And some of these asset managers will put up a chart basically that shows what's happened with BlackRock as well as KKR 
JR and Blackstone, for example, and others for that matter, is that creating uh, at least the possibility of a different sort of crisis in the future? Hmm. Well, uh, it, it certainly is. A whenever you see something, David, in the financial sector that is growing quickly and in a way that exceeds historical ranges, you probably want to stop and take a pretty hard look at it. Uh, so part of the shift uh, into asset managers was, was clearly a search for yield in a period in which deposits were paying very low rates of interest. Uh, the corporate bond market, uh, particularly the uh, shorter term corporate bonds, have really shifted towards uh, asset managers. And although you probably don't have the, the risk of an insolvency of the institutions themselves because they don't have much on their own balance sheets, it's at least worth looking to see whether you've got the risk of runs. Uh, you know, when markets shift, will people pull out, uh, and institutions pull out of uh, the asset manager's funds quickly in a way that forces the funds to engage in the kind of fire sale liquidation that played a part during the 2007 to 2009 crisis. Right. I, I, don't, I think it's risky to assert that that's the case without more analysis, but that certainly is a concern. And, and in fact, somewhat ironically, it's a concern that was raised uh, by the Obama FSOC, and it, it was repeated by the, the Trump, Secretary Mnuchin's uh, FSOC report as well on asset managers, but I'm not aware that there's been any follow-up. 